Hey, welcome back. Today I made vanilla kipferl, but there's weed in it. And I'm probably butchering that pronunciation, so I am so sorry. If you are not familiar with these, they are European Christmas cookies from the Austria, Germany neck of the woods. And vanilla kipferl literally translates to vanilla crescent. So they are kind of like shortbread, but made with almond flour, so kind of like an almond vanilla cookie. I really like them. <laughs> also, this is going to be part one out of three holiday videos. So we'll be starting with our vanilla kip furl, and then we will move into buckeyes, which are peanut butter balls dipped in chocolate. And then we will do cheese stars, which are stars of cheese. And they're really dank. Um, I thought it would be cool to kind of do a holiday spread. So if you're having like a party with a lot of stoners, you know, maybe they don't like sweets. Maybe they do like a lot of sweets. You'll have many options. So kind of fun, right? <laughs> I also wanted to mention that I infused these with wax rather than bud like I normally do. Um, that's just because I haven't done a wax infusion on the channel, so I wanted to show how to do that. And also, when you have something that's kind of a mild flavor like this, I prefer to use wax just so you don't get that weed flavor quite as strong coming through. Um, so if you have not infused with wax, don't worry because it's actually easier than doing it with bud. Um, and if you don't have access to wax, I will tell you how to do it with bud like I normally do. So um, I think that's all the announcements I have to make. And I am now going to show you how I made 32 vanilla kip furl with about 40 milligrams each. Wax is a form of cannabis concentrate or extract as it's also called. And there are many different kinds of wax that you can use. I'm gonna be using this one, which is a live resin wax. And I've been known to also use a crumble like this one, but there is shatter, there's sugars and bubble hashes and batters and butters. So if you're not sure, you can just look up the product that you're using. One note I do wanna make is that a distillate is not the same as a wax and you do not need to decarb distillate. So just keep that in mind. We will be decarbing our wax, or if you're using bud, you're going to decarb that the same way. Put it on a baking sheet and bake it at 240 degrees Fahrenheit for about 35 minutes. The hardest part of working with wax is that it's obviously very sticky and a little bit hard to get in and out of the container. So I like to do it this way. While it is fresh out of the oven, I just dump it out onto a nonstick mat. And this is not the safest way. Be beware that it is very hot, obviously. But I will take this entire mat, you know, tray and everything and put it into the freezer so that my wax will kind of harden back up and be easier to get off of the mat and melted into my butter. Next, I am setting up a double boiler to melt down my butter, and I'm just using three tablespoons of butter, and I'm going to split that in half between two recipes just because of how much wax I'm using. Um, I'll explain the dosing a little bit later, but once your wax is hardened and you are ready to go, you can see a little bit of it is still in the container, but the vast majority of it came off when we dumped it out. So I'm just using the nonstick mat to kind of stick it to itself and create a smaller area of wax or like a smaller ball that will make it easier for me to lift off with a fork. Um, you can see that I didn't wait quite long enough for mine to stiffen up. So if that's the case, just stick it back in the fridge until it is hard enough that you can pull it cleanly off the mat. Next, we will just melt our wax into the butter. So I'm stirring that over the heat until all of that wax has melted off of the fork and is evenly distributed throughout our butter. If you are using bud, you want to infuse your bud into the butter for about two and a half to three hours. And once our butter is infused, we will take it off of the heat and let it solidify in the fridge for a little while. Then we will remove that from our container and our butter is ready to be used. I always weigh mine at the end, particularly this time since, as I mentioned, I'm only going to be using half of this butter just because of the high dose of the wax that I'm using. So I'm weighing mine out to see how much I ended with and so that I can evenly split it. I am using D8 wax and it is clearly labeled with how many milligrams of THC is in this container, but you're probably going to use real wax, which is not labeled like that at all. So you will just want to identify the percent THC of the wax that you're using and then we can move into our dosing equation. Wax is commonly sold by the gram, and we know that one gram of wax is a thousand milligrams of wax, so we just need to figure out how many of those milligrams are our THC. So we will take our percent THC and multiply that by a thousand milligrams to get our milligrams of THC. So for instance, 70% THC times 1000 
would give us 700 milligrams of THC in our gram of wax. Your dosing might come out a little bit different depending on what wax you are using, but you will just take that milligrams of THC and divide that by however many items you make with it. So to carry on our previous example, if we had 700 milligrams of THC and divided that by 32 cookies, we would have 21.87 or about 22 milligrams in each cookie. I know that was kind of math heavy, but I hope I explained it okay, and if you have any questions, just let me know in the comments. So since my wax had 2,500 milligrams, I am just going to split my butter in half so that I can use 1,250 in two recipes instead of the 2,500 in one. And then I will just add enough regular butter to get to two thirds of a cup or 5.33 ounces, which is what I will need for this recipe. So again, we are starting with two thirds of a cup of butter and I am just going to whisk that together so that that can of butter will be evenly distributed throughout the regular butter and beat it until it is light and fluffy. Then we will add in half of a cup of powdered sugar and whisk that together until it is well combined. Next, I am adding in two teaspoons of vanilla and one half of a teaspoon of almond extract. And almond extract is not traditionally in vanilla kipferol recipes. Um, it's usually just the almond flour, but I really like the additional almond flavor, so I definitely recommend adding it. Next, I am going to add in both of my flours. So I'm starting with one and one third of a cup of regular all-purpose flour. And to that, I'm going to add three fourths of a cup of almond flour. And then I will just sift that into my bowl. I will be mixing this in using a spatula and it looks like so much flour when you start, but it does all mix in. You just fold it over and kind of work it into the dough. And we want this to be a relatively stiff dough so you can test it when you get to the end and if you touch it and it sticks to your finger and there's dough on your finger you need to add a little bit more flour but if you touch it and nothing is on your finger you are good to go so next we are going to form this into a log and refrigerate it um, you can make it into this log cylinder shape on a floured surface but as you know i am very lazy and i just do things the easy way so i just put it straight onto some plastic wrap and kind of form it inside of the plastic wrap into a log and then i'll move that to the refrigerator for about an hour once that has chilled, we will take it out of the plastic wrap and this time I am going to put it onto a floured surface and I'm just going to kind of shape it into a more even log and I try to flatten out the ends as well so that it's more even when I'm cutting it. So I am cutting my log in half to give me two pieces and then I will cut those halves in half and I will have four pieces and then I will cut those halves in half and I will have eight pieces. I will cut those eights into half and have 16, and then those 16 into halves and have 32, hopefully relatively even cookies. And as you can see, I just kind of rolled it in my hand and now I'm just shaping it using my fingers and stuff to make it into that crescent shape that we are going for. And then we will repeat that with all 32 cookies until all of them are little crescents. When I have finished shaping all of my cookies, I'm gonna stick them in the oven at 400 degrees Fahrenheit for about 10 minutes or until they are just starting to get golden on the edges like this. While they are still a little bit warm, we are going to coat them in sugar. So if you have vanilla sugar, you can use that and that's actually the traditional way to do it. But I like them covered in powdered sugar just the same. So I am just sticking them into this big bowl of powdered sugar, covering it with my hands and kind of patting it into the powdered sugar until the whole cookie is covered. And then I will repeat that 32 times until all of my cookies are covered in powdered sugar.
This final step is optional, but I also like to sift some powdered sugar over top of them for a little bit more coverage and a little bit more sweetness on my cookies. When they are sugared to your liking, they are ready to be eaten. Like I said, mine are about 40 milligrams each, and if you have any questions about dosing with your wax, just let me know in the comments. I will be putting out the other two videos as soon as I can edit them, so I would encourage you to be on the lookout for those. Let me know what you thought of this recipe and video in the comments, and I would love to see pictures if you try these at home. You can find me on Instagram. And as always, thank you all so much for watching. I really appreciate it, and I hope you have a great holiday season.